Okay, so welcome everyone to our self-love celebration 2018 call. Um, so many of you, a few of you are familiar with self-love day. I know Kaya is, but I know Julie might be new to it. So this day, um, it was actually officially February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, and it was actually claimed International Self-Love Day all around the world. And it's been claimed this day um, for 10 years now. And the creator of the day is a woman called Christine Arilo. And uh, I call her the queen of self-love. And so really the month of February is all about love. So this is just my delight, my gift to gather today to share some of the tools I know and to help us all just get anchored in self-love mm -hmm. and celebrate together. So uh, kind of, I have some things planned, but I also am going to be pretty much uh, going with the flow with, with all of you. So I had kind of intended for this to go about an hour and a half and you have some water and maybe a journal or paper and pen just so that you can do some reflecting. Um, and what I'd like to begin with is just a, a poem, a little reading, and then we'll just take a short uh, little time, time inward uh, to connect. So I just invite you to take this poem in. Um, you can close your eyes if you like and maybe just get yourself situated. So this poem is called, You Are Enough. And it's actually written by Ariana Schulhorn. Um, okay, and it's, read, dear one. Yes, you, you who thinks you are not enough, you who tries tire tirelessly to do everything you can do to show that you are deserving of love, worthy to be here in this world, but always worrying that it's not enough. You that feels it is what you are able to do that shows your value instead of who you are. This letter is for you. Because here's the thing. The day you were born, the world sang. For never before was there anyone like you, magnificent you, just for being. So now as you try to fill your days doing things that make you feel valuable, the truth is your true value is in being the one and only you. No matter your successes, your failures, the way you choose to live your life, you are enough. I know you think that all the pain and anger and sadness from the past make you somehow less valuable or unworthy, but oh, wear that cloak as a way to hide your light. Shed the weight, dear one. I see you. You are a gift and the world is a better place with you in it, simply because you are here. So I invite you to take those words into your being and we're just gonna be quiet for about three minutes here just to slow down from our day and arrive here together. So just taking these moments of quiet, quietness to connect.
Okay, so opening up your eyes and uh, rejoining here our, our circle. We're gonna do a stringing of the beads, just a way of checking in. So the way that we're gonna do this is um, each of us are gonna say our name, where we're zooming in from, what you're presently feeling, and what you'd like to receive today. So I'll begin and then I'll pass it to somebody else. So I'm Shakti. I'm zooming in from the Big Island in Kalapana Sea View Estates. And I'm feeling a mixture of excitement and a little nervousness. <laughs> and what I'd like to receive today is connection. And with that, I'm in. I'll pass it to Kaya. Whoops, you're, you're on mute. I'm going to unmute you. Okay. 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 This is Kaya, also zooming in from Kalapana, CV Estates in, on the Big Island. Um, I'm checking in. Grateful to Shakti for doing this. And excited to just take some time for myself and I'm hoping to leave today feeling um, even more empowered and self-confident with self-love and with that I'm in. I'll pass it to Julie. Um, aloha, I'm Julie. I'm checking in from uh, Makawal, Maui Island, and I am feeling, I've been physically uh, ill, so I've been feeling, having moments of feeling very, very weak, and they've done blood tests, and they don't know why, and I don't know why, and maybe by doing this, I'll find out why, and maybe not, but I thought uh, no Shakti, and I just felt that this would be a very good thing to do. And thank you. So I'm feeling grateful and curious and open to whatever. And with that, I'm in. All right, great. And let's go with Carol next. Hey, I'm Carol checking in from the Big Island in Pahoa. And I'm, uh, I'm feeling excited and grateful and touched that uh, I had worked on, on the self-love day celebration in, on the 13th. I, I received an email from um, Christina and I, I pursued it a little bit. And so it was really exciting to, to get this invitation so that I could um, like deepen that and, and solidify it a little more. Because I have been working on that the last two days. Um, so what I'm going to get out of this is, is that, that more uh, solid connection and uh, understanding of, of this, the self-love that is there that I, I need to access and need to learn how to access. And I appreciate the connection that is, is in the three of you. All right. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. And um, I'm glad, Carol, you referred to the, actually, Carol received a self-love kit that Christine Narilo uh, sent out for Self-Love Day. And I will be sure to send that to you, Julie, and to you, Kea, so that you can, can look at it because there's some fun stuff stuff in it, some songs, a poster, meditation. And um, so, yeah, that'll be a great follow-up. And um, yeah. So just real briefly, uh, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about self-love is that I think it was about, uh, well, I think I can pretty much track it back to my daughter's birth. Uh, so 23 years ago, I think I became aware that I had this uh, way of judging. I used to say, I judge myself to death. 
<laughs> meaning that I would get into these states of just feeling kind of comatose where I'd just be like lying down and my breath, my head was just yakety yakety <laughs> judging me and comparing me. And it, it was really, really harsh. And I think I, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't know I had that voice and probably at the time, you know, I identified it as the judge and then later the critic. And then probably 10 years ago when I met uh, Christina Rilo, I learned that uh, actually there are some inner mean girls inside my head <laughs> and that they have different personalities and different, uh, yeah, different, different ways that they play out. Um, but I've also been happy to learn that not only while the judge, the critic, the inner mean girls exist, at the same time as they exist, I'm very well aware that there's this other force, there's my inner wisdom that is live and strong inside of me. And so it's really been my, uh, my path to, to kind of lower to identify those voices inside my head um, that are beating me up and making me small and comparing me and rejecting me and trying to be perfect and just really to have compassion and love towards them um, while also getting more in tune with my inner wisdom and really trusting the voice that's that is also there so that's just a little background of uh, how I got here. And um, what we're gonna do right now is just a little game to kind of connect and, and uh, touch in with what, what's alive uh, for each of us. And some of you may have, have played this with me in other circles. Um, it's called the If You Really Knew Me game. Maybe I can actually put it put it here in the chat so you can look at it too. Yeah, why don't I do that? Um, if you sorry, uh, so I'm just going to write. There's three different questions. And one more to go. Okay. So anyway, these um, these questions, they come from the Challenge Day, uh, which is an organization that goes into schools and helps um, middle school and high school kids um, handle bullying. And um, so we've kind of adopted this for um, Self Love Day. And um, so the first question is, if you really knew me, you would know that the part of my life I feel strongest in is and then the second one is if you really really knew me you'd know the part of my life where i'm feeling the most stretched and stressed is and the third one is if you really 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 knew me what my heart and soul desire is <clears throat> and one little uh switch <clears throat> excuse me or addition i'd like to add uh to our communicating is um some tapping uh, because as I've been on this path of self-love, one of the tools that has been most, um, most helpful for me in dealing with my inner mean girls and my critic and my judge has been to use tapping to help me to get into my body. And so I just want to invite you while you're talking that you can tap and you can just put your hands right on your collarbone um, right below your collarbone. This is just, it's a great 
tapping point to use. And so what this does is if there is any stress or anxiety or negative feelings that are coming up in your body, it's one thing it's really helpful to articulate it and to clear it by verbally stating it. But it's also our negative thoughts and feelings and experiences get stored and trapped in our body. And so the, the tapping helps clear it. So I just invite you throughout the call, if you do notice any, um, any anxiety, any stress, whether you're speaking or not, even just listening to others, we're all such sensitive beings that we pick up on what others are feeling. And so this is a way of kind of protecting yourself, almost like putting that a bubble around you, a buffer so that you're not taking on other people's stress any more than you need to. So it's, it's a great self-love tool because it helps um, just it, it helps preserve you. And also when we get into um, some of the self-love promises and empowerment pieces, I also like to use the tapping because it's also good to um, anchor in uh, what we're stepping into and what we're growing, what we're stretching ourselves with. So um, looks like somebody has just joined us and this is welcome. Who is here? I'm having a feeling it might be Maria. Is that Maria? No, it's Morgane from oh, Big Morgan. Island. Okay, welcome. Yes. So sorry I'm late. Okay, well, I'm just trusting that you um, are in the right place at the right time. We've, we've been going for 24 minutes right now, and maybe I can send you the recording. Uh, but welcome to our self-love day celebration. Maybe you could just tell us where you are Zooming in from, uh, because the others we've got, I, I think you're on audio, so you can't see them, but we've got uh, three other women here. So maybe you could just introduce yourselves and uh, tell us where you're Zooming in from. Yes, uh, aloha. My name is Morgane, and I'm sorry I was late, but it's the new moon eclipse when I was in ceremony, and I just uh, came out of it because I feel like self-care is really what I super need. So I'm on the coast, I'm on the Red Road on the big island of Hawaii in Puna. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Well, welcome. You've got uh, two other Red Roaders here, kind of. Kay and I live in Kahn nice. View Estates, and Carol is over in Ainaloa, and Julie is from Makawal uh, on Maui. So you're in good hands here. And we've already yes. done a little uh, meditation and a poem about you are enough and uh, we have a little exercise we're going to do right now uh it's a game called if you really knew me so you can listen but what i was just introducing yes. was a little bit of tapping on the collarbone so um i don't know if you're familiar with tapping but i was inviting yes. everyone to just tap on the collarbone to um to release and clear any stress or anxiety that you're experiencing. So I think we'll just continue onward. And yes. um, I, I'll start off this game. Um, and it, it is in the, in the chat so that you can see it there. Um, OK, so I'm just going to begin it. And I'm going to begin by tapping. So if you really knew me, you would know the part of my life I feel strongest in is my relationship with my beloved, with my husband. I feel really solid and confident <clears throat> and in love and growing in that relationship. And if you really, really knew me, you'd know that the part of my life where I'm feeling the most stretched and stressed, uh, yeah, it's, it's in my career or my sacred work, what I'm offering to the world, I'm feeling particularly stressed by having to meet some deadlines for a course that I'm in, that I have to come up with a curriculum and some real specific outlines that I just feel overwhelmed with. <clears throat> and if you really, really, really knew me, what my heart and soul 
truly desires is to really just feel like I'm in the right place at the right time all the time and that I'm in a flow and that I'm being kind of acknowledged and compensated and valued on the outside and on the inside. And I'll end with Aho. I'll pass it to Kaya. You're my go-to. Okay. So, um, hi Morgane. This is Lahi, as you know me. Also go by Kaya. <laughs> hi, aloha, sister. <laughs> hi. Yes. Okay, if you really knew me, you would know the part of my life I feel the strongest in is um I guess financially I feel really solid and competent and yeah. Um, if you really, really knew me, you'd know that part of my life where I'm feeling the most stretched and stressed is probably my school that I'm going through right now, doing a master's degree where I have assignments due every week and lots of reading, so just managing all of that. And if you really, really, really knew me, what my heart and soul truly desire is, I guess, to feel more passion about what I'm doing. And with that, I'm in and I pass it to Carol. Thank you. <sighs> well, to me, you would know that my, what is my connection and if you really really you know that what I feel in, in interpersonal communications and if you really really knew my heart's desire that is that yeah, my heart and soul desire. Be to create a connection between spirit and interpersonal. Can you repeat that, the first one? I couldn't, it, you got cut out. Okay. Um, it, it is my the strength, I feel, is my spiritual connection. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so to connect those interpersonal with spiritual is my, is my heart's desire. And I will pass it to Julie. Okay, where, thank you. Where I feel strongest in would be my art, my painting abilities, my humor, my life, um, almost everything that I have set up and the way it is, what I'm feeling stressed in, wow, is my grandson. He's going through some very heavy learning experiences and I have great concern for him. I also have some minor stress in finances. Um, living off social security is challenging, although I'm a good financial dancer, can only dance so fast at my age. Uh, what my heart desires is um, good health for me, or to understand what is going on with my health, and then I can make it better. And also, um, wishes or something that my grandson feels how much I love him and how lovable he is. And with that, I'm tapping. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Okay. And more gain. Uh, okay. I can remember the first one. I can't see them on the screen. Okay. So yeah, you we'll might have help to you. okay. So, yeah. What, if you really knew me, what, what is, 
what's the strongest, your strength? If you really knew me, you would know that my strength is the spiritual connection. Mm. Uh, my spiritual connection to goddess, and that has been flowing the rest of my life <laughs> fairly well. Okay. Uh, and the second one is if you really, really knew me, you'd know that the part of my life where I'm feeling the most stretched and stressed is. If you really knew me, the part of my, you would know the part of my life where I'm feeling most stressed is about having to move again. I've been moving my belongings in my life almost constantly in the last year, and it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> so that would be it. Okay, and then the, have last, to move the, the last yeah. question is, if you really, really, really knew me, what my heart and soul truly desire is. If you really, really, really knew me, you would know that some, what my heart and soul really desire is. <laughs> Thing <laughs> is to live my vision of a, an altar place, a temple space in which I live and hold the temple vibe on a beautiful piece of land and a sacred geometry structure with gardens all around mm -hmm. and put forth spiritual energy to the whole world from that safe place. All right. Aho. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so um gonna kind of move us into uh focusing a little bit more on self-love, and this may be a repeat for you, Carol, since you already have the kit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, lead you all in a meditation. And this is a meditation. And if you can, you can just imagine yourself, um, imagine yourself like a tree and a beautiful tree with all these branches on it. And each of the different branches represent different parts of self-love. And so I'm going to guide you through this meditation with the purpose of happy, having you take a review of your own body, your own <clears throat> relationship to self-love, and really just get to see where you are strong and where you are weak and what you'd like to grow for this year. So again, I just invite you to be comfortable and you can close your, your eyes. You can put your hands on your heart and maybe just take a few deep breaths and kind of get into a receiving position. And feel your heart rising and falling. Feeling your heart as the source of love beating within you, connected to the download of love that is ever present. It's never left you because you are your own best friend. And I invite you to see your tree of self-love right now. This beautiful tree that you have created over the years where you decide to create self-love. See your self-love tree with luscious branches, deep roots, and a pink glow signifying the love of the divine. And maybe there's a heart just etched beautifully on the trunk of the tree with your name on it. Because this tree lives for you. When it's strong, you are taken care of and you love the world. Get close to the tree and see which places need love and nurturing and growth. Notice on the tree the branches that are fully formed and the others that are developing while others are tired or maybe wilted. And as I go through the branches, just see which one needs attention today 
or this year, find the one branch that really needs your focus and check in with you to see which ones are the strongest and which ones are the weakest and which ones need some love. So the first branch we're looking at is the branch of self-acceptance. And this is where the one that tells you that you are okay, just as you are. You know your unique self. You're proud to be who you are. This is where you consistently acknowledge yourself for all the ways in which you are imperfectly, perfectly you. So just notice this branch of self-acceptance. And then moving to self-awareness. Do you know who you really are, your gifts, your dreams? Have you stopped to ask yourself the truth of who you are? This is where you have a deep understanding of who you are and who you are not with an unwavering commitment to truth about how your actions, thoughts, and choices affect your reality and the people in the world around you. This is your self-awareness branch. And now moving over to the branch of self-care, where you're choosing to make sure that you get what you need on all levels, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, every day. So just noticing if you're taking care of yourself first without guilt or obligation, or could this self-care use more attention? And then seeing the branch of self-compassion and self-forgiveness. Are you kind to yourself no matter what? Do you forgive yourself? Is your inner mean girl quiet or is she running the show? Do you believe you've done the best you can? This is your branch of self-compassion and forgiveness. And now moving to the branch of self-empowerment. This is where you choose to take charge and responsibility for your life by acting to create the life you really desire without apology. Or are you giving up as a victim or a martyr, do you have choice in all of this? This is your branch of self-empowerment. And moving to the branch of self-esteem and self-confidence, where you know you can do anything, having that confidence do you go for your dreams and believe you can do anything? Or do you hold back? And then seeing your branch of self-expression. Are you able to express yourself? Is the world able to see you fully, truthfully, and without apology? Or are you holding back? Do you have free, full expression to dance and be who you are? And moving to the branch of self-honor and self-respect, where you honor yourself so deeply 
where you only bring into your life that which respects and honor you, honors you. Are you making choices that honor you and reflect the sacred soul that you are? Or do you make compromises? And then going to the branch of self-pleasure. Are you choosing to create and receive and experience joy? Feeling fed and nourished? Are you able to pleasure yourself and treat your body like it's a temple? And moving to the branch of self-trust where you choose to listen and follow the guidance of your inner voice. Or do you doubt yourself and question your guidance? Are you listening to your inner wisdom? And then as you have explored these 10 different branches of self-love, you're also witnessing your trunk and you're seeing the roots of your self-worth seeing how strong they are, those roots, as they go down into the ground. Are they tied to something outside of yourself? Does the voice that tells you you're not enough just because you are you tell you to do more or be more? So just take a moment and I invite you to shift some of those roots over if any of them are, are tied to things on the outside or conditions that really don't have much to do with who you really are at your core. I just invite you to shift some of those roots right now to a place of divine, pure love. Just allow this bright pink, strong love that knows you are enough just because you are you. And if all you do today is love, then you've done enough. And if all you have done is love others and love yourself, then you've done enough. If you have served others well in yourself, then you have done enough. So I invite you to move all your roots and your self-worth over to this value system. And now just take a notice of which branch on your self-love tree needs attention. Ask yourself, where would I love to grow my self-love in 2018? Notice which branch wants attention. And just choosing whether it's the branch of self-awareness and honesty self-acceptance, self-care, self-compassion, self-forgiveness, self-trust, self-esteem, self-empowerment, self-expression, self-respect and self-honor, or self-pleasure or self-worth. See which one jumps out to you. And so I just invite you to open up your eyes. And this might be a time where you can take your out and pen out and just journal the insights that came to you. Or perhaps there is um, one of the branches that you noticed that you would like to, to strengthen, that you'd like to transform. And you can just write that down now.
Yeah, and you can make um, kind of a commitment to yourself, maybe on a piece of paper, you can write, I choose, I choose to grow my, and whatever branch it is, you can just write that down, making that commitment to yourself. And then I, I also invite you, if you want to, to write down what you'd like to release, what you're saying no to, so that you can say yes to yourself. So if there's something that you'd like to release, you can write that down too. Yeah, and then I'd love to have um, each of you share which branch you want to grow. I was experimenting. I actually did a poll here. You can, um, uh, let, I'll launch the poll there so you can <laughs> fill that out. Um, but I'd love to hear kind of um, verbally from anyone who'd like to share what, um, what branch they want to grow for this year in 2018. Who would like to start? I'll start. I want to grow my branch of self on that. I heard you say you want to grow your branch of self honor. Great. Self honor. And self respect. And self respect. Okay. And is there something that you're, you're aware of that you need to release that you need to say no to? I release my belief that I am not worthy of my honor and respect. Hmm. Okay, and anything else that you'd like to release or say no to or something that you'd like to say yes to? I just want to, to reinforce that I am worthy of my own honor and
All right. Well, we see you in your honor and self-respect. Thank you. Anybody else want to share what came up for them? Hmm. I will. This okay. is Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Uh, I, hi. <laughs> Aloha. I definitely, I came on this call because I see my desperate need for self-care of my physical self because <clears throat> I just go to too many events and there's so much to do here and I try to do everything and I'm exhausted and sore and I need to stay home and lay in bed. So uh, I'm wishing to grow better the branch of just physical self-care. So, and it sounds like you want to release um, saying no. You want, you want to actually say no to things so you can say yes to yourself. Is that right? Um, yes. Well, actually, I would choose the wording I let go. I don't really release to me means signing on again, <laughs> really, but I am letting go of trying to do everything and mm -hmm. thinking I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time uh, and knowing that I'm always in the right place at the right time. I don't have to go to Uncle Robert's just because it's Wednesday night. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I am letting go of that. Thank you. Yeah. And is there a specific promise that you would like to make to yourself um, that you might like to uh, affirm? Uh, well, that I am worthy of caring for. There's some self-worth in there. I need to take care of myself before all the things that are out there to be done. So yes, I am committing to, to honoring myself that way. Hmm. Okay, beautiful. Great. And Kale, which branch are you growing this year? Well, I think I'm gonna grow the branch of self-expression. Um and I choose to grow I, sorry, I release my habit of comparing myself to others. Mm. I'm with you with that. <laughs> <laughs> and is there something that you want to embrace? You want to say yes to, to activate your self-expression? Um. I would like to embrace um, the concept that other people would love to hear what I have to say. Mm. Yeah, I get that. I do want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> right here, right now. Uh, yeah. All right, and yes. Julie, did, did you pick uh, a branch? You know, originally I said self-esteem, but once I saw it in writing, hmm. uh, I would have to, I think, switch to self-compassion and forgiveness. In hmm. other words, I did write down, I have done well, I have done my best, and not do the shoulda, coulda, what is if only, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I release um, any patterns and all patterns that no longer serve me. Okay. And is there a promise you want to make regarding that? Regarding your oh, compassion God. and uh, forgiveness to yourself? Okay, I guess, uh, well, I don't want to guess. I promise that 
I will keep remembering that I have done the best I could. Hmm. Okay, great. That's beautiful. And um, what I'm growing this year is I'm growing my, <clears throat> my trunk, my roots, my self-worth. Um, and <clears throat> I'm going to let go and release just judging myself based on what other people are doing, basically letting go of comparing myself to others. And I'm also going to say no to overgiving. And what I'm embracing is just saying yes to sharing my gifts, yes to anchoring my roots kind of in the ground each morning by meditation and also by just phys physically connecting to the earth. And uh, yeah, I'm just committing to, pro to the promise that I am valuable, just that mantra. That feels good to me. So, great. you know what? What? Are, are you finished? I don't want to interrupt. I am finished. You can go for it. I am wondering as I am looking at what branch of self love are you growing this year, is there some way we can get a written list yeah. of this? Yes, yeah. Wow can't see. Yeah, in the self-love kit, um, you'll get a whole explanation of all the branches and I'll send that, I'll send that to you. I don't know. Um, you, this is, let me, um, yeah, it's a beautiful, um, this is what it looks like, uh, the tree. And then it has all the branches on it. So I'll send that to you afterwards in an email with the, the PDF of the self-love tree and an explanation of all the branches. So you, you can look through that. And then in the self-love kit, you'll, you'll get more explanation of that. So that'll help you, yeah. Yeah, I would like to look at it some more and perhaps even share it with some friends. Yeah, definitely, good idea. Um, so what I thought we'd do next is kind of um, like some of you already have made kind of mantras and promises to yourself, but a another way to kind of explore this is to look at what we call the five gates of self-love. So I thought we just, this will kind of, um, now that you've kind of honed in on what part of the self-love tree really needs nurturance, this is also going to, you can kind of imagine that you yourself are this tree and that you're, you know, enriching it with but good fertilizer and you're growing because as I grow one branch, it affects the other. And as I grow my roots, it affects the whole tree. But you can also imagine that word that our tree is surrounded by these gates, these portals, these doorways. And so, each of us have different paths, just like we were saying um, in the beginning, what, what we're strong in, you know, that maybe our strengths are in this area. So with that in mind, we're going to look at these portals. We're going to look at these gates to see what is really appropriate for me at this time to focus on, which gate is going to help me best access my tree of self-love, it's gonna best help me grow this, this branch. So again, you can just get comfortable and I'm gonna just have, um, have you explore these different, there's five gates. And so you're just gonna um, see which one uh, really calls, calls out to you, which one uh, you wanna focus on. So imagine that you're stepping into your very own garden that has five gates around it. And think of these gates as milestones to check your current relationships with yourself against. And as you hear each gate, feel into where you are with it right now and be honest. Ask yourself, am I new to this gate? Have I already passed through it? Am I really solid? 
Do I have unconditional love and respect for myself here? And claiming that you've gone through a gate doesn't mean perfection 100% of the time. It just means this is where your work has been. It's your focus. So you just want to listen to the five gates and, and just ask yourself which, which gate you'd like to kind of exercise. So again, you can put your hands on your heart and just... Um, allow yourself to review each of this, the gates. So is this year really about growing your capacity to stay true to your heart and soul's desire? Think about your dreams and your life. This is where you keep the promise that you will never settle for less than your heart and soul desires. See how that feels when you say to yourself, I will never settle for less than my heart and soul desires. And maybe just even check in with yourself on a scale. Let's say when I say it, I will never settle for less than my heart and soul desires. Let's say a 10 is completely truthful. So just take a moment and come up with a number from zero to 10 where you might be on that scale for that gate. And you can just write that down for the gate for gate one, where you are in terms of never saying settling less for less than your heart and soul desires and give it a number so 10 is i i do that all the time five is sometimes zero is i don't do that at all so this is the gate of your dreams and life and so take another deep breath in and we're going to look at the the gate of your relationship to others. This is your relationship to your family and to your friends. When you have passed through this gate and you have fulfilled your promise, you can wholeheartedly say, I only have loving, respectful relationships, period. So you can look around your life and see your love rings and see the people that are in your, in your life right now and just noticing if you have any toxic relationships, noticing the relationships that don't work for you, or where maybe you've overstayed in relationships that don't support your dreams and your life. Because you are really committed to only having loving, respectful relationships. So in this, if this is the gate for you, it's about growing your wealth and love and growing support and having a plethora of amazing relationships with others, not just one, but all of your relationships. So the promise for this one is I only have loving, respectful relationships. So I want you to say that out to yourself. I only have loving, respectful relationships and rate it from zero to 10, 10 being it's great. Zero is not at all. So that's gate two, and you can write that down. So gate three, we're gonna tune into, again, you can close your eyes. This is the gate where you are kind to yourself. It's the gate of your mind and emotions, where you make the promise and keep it to be kind, gentle, and compassionate and patient to yourself where you're having a loving relationship with yourself, just like a good parent has with their child. And when you fail, fail, you don't beat yourself up. You're able to pick yourself up with love and acceptance, like a child who is learning how to do new things instead of judging yourself or criticizing yourself. So this gate is all about reforming your inner mean girl. And so again, you're gonna just say to yourself, this vow, I am kind, gentle, and compassionate with myself. And you're going to rate that again from zero to 10.
And then gate four, you're going to move to your body. This is your temple, not your workhorse. It's not the thing to beat into shape. If you pass through this gate, you keep your body like a temple. You adore it. You adorn it. You are affectionate to it. You're grateful for it. You treat it like you're a whole heartedly in support of it so that it can be as vibrant as possible. So this vow is all about loving and accepting and enduring your body temple. So asking yourself, is, is this the one? Just holding on to your body, saying to yourself, I accept and adore my body temple. And giving it a number. And then the last one, gate five, this is the gate to truly take care of yourself, to nourish yourself, to make sure you get what you need no matter what. It's your ability to nourish and nurture yourself and take care of yourself above all others. This is the vow to take care of myself and to stay true to myself, even if it means disappointing another. So that's the actual vow that you can say to yourself and see how truthful it is for you. Of I stay true to myself, even if it means disappointing another. And give yourself a number. Yeah, so again, you want to choose one of these uh, five gates and see um, which one you want to activate this year. And um, I'd love to have you share and report which one you want to, you want to, for some of you, it may be very much in alignment with your, with the branch or for others, it might be different. Um, I know the gate that I chose is um, my relationship with my mind and emotion that I'm kind and gentle and compassionate with myself always. That's one that I just, I need to keep opening up, keep, keep affirming, keep promising. So that's what's up for me, gate three. What about you, you all? Well, I picked... Um... Oh, and it's written down on the poll if you need to look at it again, too. I picked the relationship to others gate. Um, okay, number two. Yeah, not because I don't feel they're loving and respectful, but just because I want more. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, so you want to open up that gate and put more attention there to create yeah. more. And it goes along with self-expression because I can through expressing myself to others, I'll have more relationships. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, so how does it say, would you like to say that out loud? I only have loving, respectful relationships and lots of them. <laughs> I only have loving and respectful relationships and lots of them. Yeah, beautiful. And that again is something you can tap into your body just because like you're creating a new a new, um, a new imprint for that. Awesome. Okay, who would like to share their gate next? Uh, I can share mine. This is Morgan. Okay, Morgan. Uh, the last, the last gate. I stay true to myself, even if it means disappointing others. Yeah. So that's really yeah. big for me. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, yeah, so it really fits in with your self-care. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, great. Thank you for affirming that. 
All right, what about Carol and Julie? Okay, this is Julie, and I think I'm going to pick number five. All right. Your ability to nourish and nurture and care for yourself. Yeah, although it seems like I do pretty good. I'm the mom, the grandma, the great grandma, the one who, the leader, the one who takes care of everyone. So myself is back in the corner. Uh, and I mean, I eat well and I'm exercising well and doing all of that. I recently committed to something I really didn't want to do because I didn't want to upset the other person. Mm. I gave myself the lowest number for that one. Right. But I, I okay. And how does that feel to you? You want to say that out loud? I stay true to myself, even if that means disappointing another. I stay true to myself, even though it, it means, means disappointing it means another. Disappointing another. I, yeah. Okay, I stay true to myself and take care of myself, even if it means disappointing another. Yeah, you got it. Beautiful. Okay. Are you uh, Carol, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I did the same one as well. I got a zero for that. I stay, oh. I stay true to myself, even if it means disappointing another. So that plays into my feeling that I'm not worthy of honor and respect. And, um, and, and the, uh, the first thing we talked about was um, the, the, uh, the, my need for, for uh, connecting to others on a spiritual level, if I can, if I can um, be true to that spirituality, that, that love within me, then, then it will, you know, maybe it'll disappoint on the outside, but there will still be that, that connection. Hmm. I'm not sure I, I articulated that that well, but. Yeah, no, I really see the connection by choosing that gate. It's you're also your 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 honoring yourself. That part, yeah. Being respect, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so that's a way to recognize that I am worthy of of respect and being honored, honoring myself rather. Great. All right, well, um, yeah, does anybody have any questions or thoughts or anything coming up that you'd like to share? Sometimes, this is Julie speaking, sometimes it's hard for me, um, when, you know, my adult child does the trauma drama, I stay detached. Well, I've learned to stay detached. Um, I don't know, I just got a text from her, but I'm just going to forget it because I'm busy with you. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, you can get distracted. Self, yeah, <laughs> that mother of you. 
Right. And I don't want to disappoint you in the group by going to another place. So bye, y'all. I'm sticking with the self-love group. <laughs> gotcha. Well, we're we're kind of coming to the to the end. I just wanted to see what's what's alive in you, and I I think um, I have kind of a poem that we could close with that kind of is in fitting uh, with what you're what you're saying. And I was thinking that we could I'll read the poem and we could kind of tap it into our body as a way to kind of anchor in and um, choose self love for ourselves. So um. Yeah, let's just go with this. So this poem is called Today I Choose Myself, which I think is a good theme for, for us. So I invite you to tap in any way that you like because we want to just anchor this in, into our bodies. So, um, and you're welcome to repeat it out loud after me if it's easy for you. So I choose to be the queen of my own domain. I choose you guys can repeat. I choose to be the queen of my own domain. domain. Yeah. To name myself as the one who governs my life. To name myself as the one as the one who governs my life. Myself. My life. I shall not wait for the approval of others. I shall not wait. For the approval of others. of others. In order to act on my own behalf. In order to act, order on, to my act own on my own behalf. behalf. And inner knowings. And, and inner knowings. Knowing. I choose to listen to this great heart within me. I choose to listen to, listen to, the to this great heart, heart within me. To honor what it needs and longs for. To honor what it needs and longs for. I shall no longer allow the sacred parts of myself I shall no longer allow uh, the sacred parts of my self to be fragmented and isolated and hidden. To be fragmented, isolated, and hidden. I choose to take up space in this universe and its call. I choose to take up space. To take up Space in this in this earth. and its call and, and its call to inhabit and uplift this vessel to, to inhabit up. and uplift yep. this vessel this of, vessel of self which is my temple of self, which is my temple. I shall not keep my gifts to myself any longer. <laughs> I shall not keep my gifts to myself any longer. Any <laughs> longer. Or allow my fear to keep me from my greatness. Or allow my fear. From my greatness. You mean from my greatness. I choose to be as wonderful as I truly am. I choose to be as wonderful as I truly and really am. To explore just who I might be. To explore who, who I just might be. After all these years. After all these years. I shall not judge myself for where I have not. I shall not judge myself for where I have not. 
journeyed yet or the ways I have been untrue? I choose to forgive myself. I choose, I choose to, forgive, to myself. forgive myself. And any of the old stories. And any of the old stories. To make space for new stories. To make space for new stories. <laughs> Legends even to emerge. Legends even to emerge. I shall not forsake my dreamings and visionings. I shall not forsake, not forsake my dreaming and visioning. Or allow other ideas to crowd my own. Or let other ideas, other ideas crowd my own. I will think my own thoughts. I will think my own thoughts. I choose to fall in love with who I am. I choose, I choose to fall in to love, fall with, in love with who I am. As I am today. As I am, As today. I am today. To embrace the, mevi the messy and marvelous in me. <laughs> I shall not diminish my light. I shall I not shall diminish, not diminish my, light. my light. One day longer. One day One longer. Day longer. I am releasing the shadows. I am, I am releasing the shadows. Right this very moment. Right this very moment. I choose to see you. I choose to see you. And be seen by you too. And be seen by you too. To find and dance with those who are ready to choose. To find and dance with those who are ready to choose. I choose to see myself as whole, holy, worthy. I choose to see myself as whole, holy, worthy. So much more than enough. So much more than enough. So much more than enough. I choose to be glorious. I choose to be glorious. Being glorious is not the default. Being glorious is not the default. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And today I choose myself. And today, today I, I choose, choose myself. myself. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so that was a poem written by uh, Sheila Sophie, Sophia McLeod. First time I ever added topping to it, but I think it's appropriate. <laughs> oh, it's great. Yes, that was great. Cool. So we're kind of at the end of the hour and I'd love to have each of you just check out with what you're feeling now or what gift you received. Uh, yeah, and then I, I will, um, we can go on our way and spread the love to your loved ones. <laughs> Who would like to check out first? So, why don't you go I, <laughs> Okay, I am checking out with connection, comfort, joy, and acceptance. All right. Aho. Yeah. 
Hmm. Carol, you want to go next? Okay, I am Carol and I am checking out with self honor and self respect and respect of all of you. And appreciation for Shakti for bringing this moment to me at a most timely space. It's, uh, it's very touching, and I, I felt the teary about it. So grateful. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shakti, for bringing mm -hmm. all this to us. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm honoring myself for, for being there and showing up. Yay. Uh -huh. uh, do you want to pass it to Kale? Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Kaya and I'm checking out, um, feeling grateful and more self-centered and just, I don't know, I feel like I have more appreciation for myself okay. and for showing up. Yep. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Mm. And more game? More game. Uh, I am checking out of the circle. Thank you for allowing me in late. I came straight from my ceremony into this ceremony of self-love because I knew that's what I needed the most on this new moon day. So very grateful to you, Shakti, for preceding this little circle ceremony. Uh, I super, am super grateful, and I feel much better, and I'm, I'm cheered for the future, <laughs> better future. So thank All right. you. Well, thank you for blessings coming. You. Yeah, blessings to you. And um, Shakti, checking out here, I'm feeling, um, yeah, I feel kind of energized, basically. And I feel happy and connected. And uh, yeah, just I'm feeling a lot of love. And I'm just happy that each of you showed up and that we could share this together. And I wish you blessings for a wonderful day and a wonderful year. And thank you for taking the space and time for yourself today. It's awesome. So with that, I'm checking out. And checking out. All the best. Aloha. Aloha. Lots of love. Aloha. Here's a heart. Bye-bye.